This is Chapter 5, Pre-Class Lecture, Part 4A. This lecture will focus on acid rain and ocean acidification. Rainwater is naturally acidic due to the dissolving of carbon dioxide gas into liquid water, which produces a weak acid known as carbonic acid. And so the carbonic acid itself, being a weak acid, will partially dissociate. And therefore, in partially dissociating, it produces H plus ions in solution. And this is what makes rainwater slightly acidic. The other product, and this should be a plus sign, not an arrow, is the bicarbonate ion. And so this is a natural process which helps maintain rainwater at a slightly acidic level. This equilibrium reaction not only occurs in the atmosphere, but it also occurs in our bodies. And it occurs to maintain our blood pH somewhere between 7.2 and 7.6, which is slightly basic. Now, carbon dioxide is a natural source of producing H plus ions and causing rain to be slightly acidic. But they're not the only sources. Carbon dioxide is not the only source that eventually produces H plus ions and therefore makes rain slightly acidic. Other components are present due to human activities like sulfur oxides and nitrogen oxides. Sulfur trioxide, a secondary air pollutant, it comes from burning coal, but also from a natural, what's called an anthropogenic source, volcanic eruptions. So SO3 reacts with water to produce a strong acid. Called sulfuric acid. Now we're not going to focus on the nomenclature of how to name acids. If you take general chemistry, you will get that lesson in naming acids in that course. In the introductory chemistry course that we're taking, the only main nomenclature that you are required to learn is how to name molecular compounds and how to name ionic compounds. You will not be required to learn how to name acids. And so in with this strong acid, it dissociates completely. Because it's a strong acid, whereas weak acids like carbonic acid partially dissociates. And then you produce two H plus ions and the sulfate polyatomic ion. So again, this makes the rain acidic. And because H2SO4 is a strong acid, we call this acid rain. Whereas the weak acid, carbonic acid, only makes rainwater slightly acidic. And we don't classify that as acid rain.
another source of producing acid rain is the nitrate, the uh, nitrogen dioxide and other nitrogen oxides. And their source is usually automobile exhaust. So another human activity. And so the NO2 reacts with water and oxygen to produce nitric acid, another strong acid, and therefore produces four H plus ions, which makes acid rain. So taking a look at some questions, we get sulfur uh, trioxide from burning coal as well as from volcanic uh, eruptions. So assume that coal has this molecular formula with a molar mass of 1.908 times 10 to the third grams per mole. What is the mass percent sulfur in coal? Well, the mass percent sulfur in coal is gonna be the atomic mass of sulfur divided by the molar mass of coal. Times 100. And so sulfur has an atomic mass of 32.06 grams per mole straight from the periodic table divided by the total molar mass of coal The grams per mole units cancel. And so you get a 1.68% sulfur. So if we have a power plant that burns 1.00 times 10 to the six tons of coal per year, based on our 1.68% sulfur calculated in part A, how many tons of sulfur are released per year? And so if we have 1.00 times 10 to the six tons of coal, and if 1.68% of that is sulfur, we'll convert that percent to a decimal by moving the decimal two spaces to the left, converting that percent into a decimal, multiplying that decimal times one times 10 to the six, we get 1.68 times 10 to the fourth tons of sulfur. And then part C, if the sulfur that's released reacts with oxygen in the air and produces SO2, how many tons of SO2 are produced? Well, this is our balanced chemical reaction. And it's neat, everything is in a one-to-one -one molar stoichiometric ratio. So therefore, our mole ratio, we, get, we produce one ton of SO2 for every one ton of sulfur that gets released. And so if we have 1.68 tons of sulfur, and if there's one ton of SO2, for every one ton of sulfur, the tons of sulfur cancel, and we get 1.68 tons of SO2 because of the one-to-one -one stoichiometric ratio. And then part D, if SO3, if SO2 that's re produced reacts with oxygen and forms SO3, that's why SO3 is called a secondary 
air polluted. SO2 is the primary air pollutant that produces SO3. Then what is going to happen to this SO3 when it's released in the atmosphere and it reacts with water? So SO3 reacting with water is going to form the acid, sulfuric acid. And produce acid rain. So why is acid rain a problem? So if rainwater is naturally acidic, why is ocean water generally basic at about a pH of 8.2? Well, there are three chemical species that are responsible for maintaining the ocean's pH. The carbonate ion, CO3 2 minus, the bicarbonate ion, HCO3 minus, and carbonic acid. And so they have this balanced equilibrium reaction. Now the bicarbonate ion HCO3 minus also has a proton and therefore it can react and release that proton to produce the carbonate polyatomic ion CO3 2 minus and then of course releasing more H plus and that's what makes the solution acidic is the release of the H plus ions. And so if there's more CO2 in the atmosphere, because CO2 reacting with water is what produces the carbonic acid in the first place, if you increase the amount of CO2 in the atmosphere by burning fossil fuels, then you're producing more carbonic acid and therefore you're producing more and more and more H plus ions and therefore and therefore you are therefore producing more and more of these H plus ions that get dissolved in the oceans. And so if you have an increased amount of CO2 in the atmosphere you eventually causes an increase in the amount of CO2 that gets dissolved in the ocean, and that results in the formation of more carbonic acid, which results in the release of more H plus ions into the water, therefore producing more and more acidic water in the ocean. And so why is the acidification of the ocean a problem? Well, it's a problem for the aquatic life that live in the ocean. And not only is this a problem for the ocean, but also lakes and rivers and streams. Now, Midwestern states have a lot of limestone, calcium carbonate, which is a base. And it can neutralize excess acid, carbonic acid that gets produced in lakes and rivers and streams in the Midwest. And so calcium carbonate has a high acid neutralizing capacity, which is called ANC. Now, New England states don't have a whole lot of limestone in the bed of their surface waters. They have lots of granite. And it's much less reactive, so it does not have a good acid neutralization capacity. It has a very low ANC. So therefore, it can't neutralize the excess carbonic acid the way limestone can. So therefore, acidification of lakes and rivers and streams is a much bigger problem in the New England states versus the Midwestern states. And so here again is our pH scale. 
Aquatic life normally would like to reside in waters that has pH that ranges between 6.5 to 9.5. If the pH drops too low, like to about 5.6, many fish start to die off. If the pH gets even lower down to five, most aquatic life will disappear. And then if it goes all the way down to four, then lakes are completely dead. No aquatic life whatsoever, not even plants. And so the bicarbonate ion can either donate an H plus or it can gain an H plus. So showing both balance equations for HCO3 minus, if it can either donate an H plus, that means it can act like an acid, or if it can gain an H plus, that means it can act like a base. So in acting like an acid, water being the base is going to donate an H plus to the water. And form the carbonate polyatomic ion. Now it can also act like a base. And receive a proton from water, which will now act like an acid and form carbonic acid and the hydroxide polyatomic ion. And that brings us to the end of Chapter 5, Pre-Class Lecture, Part 4A.